welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church this February 14th, 2021, Transfiguration Sunday. Will you join me in the opening prayer? Glory of all creation, as the sun nudges us out of bed each morning, so you gently lift the veil of doubts and fears from our hearts, that we might see your joy. At the setting of the sun, you do not leave us alone, but you sit with us through the night, sharing stories of hope, and we do not lose heart. Joyous face of God, on the peaks of promise we discover your grace, spark, sparkling with gentle delight as it comes to rest within our weary lives. In the valleys of despair, as we trudge along, our burdens dragging behind us, we turn to discover you, putting them on your shoulders, the gentleness of your compassion, lighting the way to, to the kingdom, and we do not lose heart. Listening spirit, in the hard times which life may offer, you are there with us, hearing not only our struggles, but the hopes singing silently in our souls. In the barren seasons through which may, we may walk, we find you ahead of us, planting the seeds of joy, which will once more blossom in the springtime of God's love, and we do not lose heart. God in community, holy in one, we lift our hearts, our hopes, our voices in worship this day. Amen. We can become so burned out by our hectic days that we lose sight of the one who gives us life. We can become so impatient waiting for God to astound us with wonders when we have the simple pleasure of each day. In these quiet moments, away from all those things which distract us, let us bring our brokenness to the one who listens to our hearts and heals our souls. Join me as we pray, saying, The radiance of your grace is poured out in every moment. Shaper of mountaintops, but we dull its luster by living in the shadows. We indulge in fantasy games and watch shows which claim to be real, but we have trouble simply sitting in your presence, in your healing silence. We can become so infatuated with your love for us, we overlook those who hunger for acceptance and hope. Revealer of mystery, forgive us. In silence, may we hear your whispers of grace. In mercy, may we feel your forgiveness lifting the burden of guilt from us. In trust, may we go forth to serve your world, filling it with the light and love of the one who is the light of the world, Jesus Christ. The promise is true. God's light has come into the world and into our lives. We are graced with glimpses of God's glory, even as we are filled with mercy and forgiveness. Here we find the peace and quiet we need. Here we are set free from all that keeps us from serving. Here we are given mercy and hope. Here we give thanks to our God. Amen. Our first reading is from 2 Kings 2, 1 through 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. 
Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them were crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in the whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. second lesson comes from the gospel according to Mark chapter 2 I mean chapter 9 verses 2 through 9 listen for the word of the Lord six days later 
Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you join your hearts with me in prayer? Holy One, we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> the story of the transfiguration is a story with six characters, but maybe none we can or want to identify with Fully. Picture the scene as uh, if it were maybe a still life, like a, a crash set up before your eyes. Here is Jesus, dazzling with the presence of God. Two prophets, long dead, talking with him. And here are three disciples, stunned and terrified. Circle around the scene with me. Let's start with Jesus. Of course, we can't presume to fully identify with Jesus as the Son of God. But as a human being, Jesus was probably really tired. That's, un that's usually when he tried to get away, to go into the hills for a prayer break, to get a mountaintop perspective. When we are in the midst of the day-to-day -day slogging through the muck, putting out fires. It is easy to lose sight of the big picture. Today's practice of scrolling through the news feed or panning the headlines as they come on your television makes us get lost in the constant Feed of information, the details, the crises that overwhelm us. It is easy as a human being to identify with Jesus. Maybe he was wondering what next. Maybe he was wondering how effective he had been so far from the mountaintop, looking over the land of Galilee, he could probably see a little girl that he had raised from the dead a few days before. Maybe she was out playing in the courtyard of her house. Perhaps Jesus could see a crowd gathering on one side of the mountain asking each other, where did that miracle go? Miracle worker go with his loaves and fishes. We're hungry again. Maybe in a different direction, he could see another crowd and in their midst, a young boy having a seizure, foaming at the mouth, and people are asking, where did the healer go? If you know what it is like to be tired, to be misunderstood, to have people seeking you out for what you can do for them, and other people criticizing you and working against you, 
maybe you have a little something in common with Jesus. And if you've ever been filled with dread at what lies ahead, you have a little something in common with Jesus. He had come up here to be alone, but once on the mountain, deep in prayer, here comes company, Moses and Elijah. Jesus' ancestors believed that any new Messiah that came would have to be in the mold of these two. Moses, the great, greatest prophet Israel had ever known, set the standard for any Messiah who would come in the future. Moses led the people in an exodus from Egypt. Moses had seen God face to face, and his face had shown. How could we possibly identify with him? Of course, on the human side, we remember Moses hadn't wanted to be a prophet on the first place and had made excuses to God to get out of it. He didn't consider himself good enough to work for God. If you know what it's like to make excuses to God, maybe you have a little in common with Moses. And later, Moses had given in to the people when he couldn't stand their murmuring and complaining and rebelling another second. If you've ever compromised your faith convictions for popular opinion, you have a little something in common with Moses. When God took him to the top of Mount Nemo to survey the promised land, he couldn't enter into it. If you've ever felt the pain of separation from God because of something you did, you have a little something in common with Moses. Fearful, making mistakes, yet in the end, a great prophet. Maybe there's something there for us. Though we have become sometimes excuse-making, soft-spined servants, we still have been chosen and called for leadership. We have a lot in common with Moses. Moses knew about hurting, and he knew about glory, and he came back to point Jesus toward the glory. But what about Elijah, this fearless prophet who, rather than dying like the rest of us, was taken up into heaven in a chariot of fire? Of course, he was the same prophet who, when he found Queen Jezebel's forces were out to kill him, ran away, hid out in the hills, and sitting under a scraggly old broom tree, begged pathetically for God to take his life. Any of us who have ever said to God, this is the end. I didn't sign on for this. It's too hard. Have a little something in common with Elijah. From begging for death under a broom tree to being taken up in heaven in a chariot of fire, Elijah knew hurting and he knew glory. And he came back to talk to Jesus about the glory. Many people in Jesus' time expected that Elijah would return to signal the coming of the Messiah. And sure enough, he had. But just then, a cloud overshadows Jesus and the others. The same cloud that stood at the door of Moses' tent to mark the presence of God. And then the cloud lifts and Jesus is alone. God speaks to him, calls him again, my beloved. And 
Jesus is ready to go back down the mountain and back into his life. And then as he knows his suffering and death. What about those disciples? Mumbling ideas about staying up there, building memorials. Maybe we identify with them. Don't we sometimes want to just stay on the mountaintop, the place of God's presence where we are dazzled and overwhelmed and maybe, yes, terrified. But you know what? It's better than down here in the mess. We want to build altars there and make memories of those beautiful, amazing, terrifying moments when we see God face to face, when we're confirmed that what we are doing is right. But Jesus says, hey guys, let's go on down. This is our work now to go off the mountaintop. My hope is that for each of us, not just the PNC commissioned to do their work, not just the new elders ordained and installed to lead this congregation, and all the elders who are leading us, but each one of us in the Trinity family, that we might have a renewed sense of God's presence with us here in the mess. God is with us both in the pain and in the glory. Transfiguration is not just for the few who've seen the face of God and lived, no, I think transfiguration is for all of us. The weary, the grieving, the tongue-tied, the overwhelmed, the despairing. We can be changed, all of us. Like Jesus, let us look around. Let us see the faces of our companions on the journey. Be inspired by them, be by their hurting, because they, just like you, give in when they should be strong, run away when they should stand, and stay when they should go. But also be inspired by their glory as they reflect the glory of God. See in your neighbor the complete and utter abandon with which God loves us. Be changed because it is ordinary people like you and I whom God saves, whom God loves, and whom God works through. God is with us. Go out as God's people into God's world to heal the hurting, to free those in slavery, to bring hope to the despairing. We, the transfigured, have work to do. Amen. Okay, Trinity family, there are varieties of gifts, but it is the same spirit that gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord we serve. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each it is a given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. We are called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. 
within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons, as ruling elders, and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us. Through ordination, God provides for active care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments. Representing the one holy Catholic Church and a apostolic and titular church, the session of Synod Church to Return now ordains and stated in the annual church portal to ministry as the elder and involve them to active service in this obligation. The session also involves to active service those who have been previously ordained, if you train or do the Those present may stand. Those at home. I'm going to profess our faith together. When God calls some to particular forms of ministry, God calls us all to bear gladly the yoke of Christ given in the covenant of baptism. Let us therefore reaffirm our baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith. Of the, Holy, of the Holy Catholic Church. Trusting in the gracious mercies of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. We praise you for leading your people Israel through the waters of the sea, out of bondage and into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your Son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death, and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you for pouring out your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us into all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts, that we might proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. We rejoice that you have claimed us in our baptism and anointed us for service in Christ's name, and that by your grace we are born anew. 
by your Holy Spirit, renew us that we may be empowered to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Friends, remember your best. Elders here. All right, elders, I'm going to ask you the constitutional question. Okay. Camera's going to make sure I'm in the right place. <laughs> We're all spaced. <clears throat> all right. This is for Nathaniel and Camp. Being ordained. Camp and Nathaniel, in baptism, you were signed by the love of God. Clothed in the grace of Christ and anointed with the gift of the Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you are called by God through the voice of the church for new ministry and service in Jesus' name. In accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, show your commitment to this calling by responding to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, to acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church? Through him, believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by our Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the Church Universal, in God's Word to you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our Church? as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do. And will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit. Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, Intelligence, imagination, and love. Will you be a faithful, ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving the councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice? Again, address the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Camp and Nathaniel as ruling elders, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. We do. do we agree to pray for them? Normally we lay on hands, and because of social distancing, we can't do that. Um, so we'll, we'll have to come back around to this. Our, our great, our great goodwiller uh, clerk says that um, laying on hands is something that is a long tradition in the church for thousands of years. Uh, so we will do this once we can actually do it. So right now, everybody who's been ordained in some fashion, just uh, lay your hands out and. We'll do it in spirit. The Lord be with you. And with 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed us without fear, placing their trust in you alone. For judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace. For prophets and apostles who spoke your bold words of mercy and of truth. For leaders and teachers in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your spirit, we proclaim your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. Gracious God, we also give thanks for your servant, Vicki, as she continues in the ministry to which you have called her. Help her to rely on the gifts of your spirit and to follow Christ faithfully in this calling. Give all of them a spirit of truthfulness, that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church, that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain your church and ministry, ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our servants as the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our lives together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You stand. Daniel and Hamp, you are ruling elders, ordained to ministries of service and government in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Vicki, also our ruling elder of Trinity, adds, be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Amen. Here. That's what we're about. The call of Christ. 
Christ is to a willing, dedicated discipleship. Our discipleship is a manifestation of the new life we enter through baptism. Discipleship is both a gift and a commitment, an offering and a responsibility. Each of you has said yes to the service of being on the pastor nominating committee. And we know uh, that sometimes this service is for a year, sometimes for two, sometimes for longer. It depends uh, on the grace of God and, and the, uh, who is available. And we, uh, we don't know how it goes sometimes. So it's a, it's a big commitment, and we really appreciate the gift that you all have given to this work of finding a person that God has called to this place, this amazing congregation. going to give each of you, uh, and we're going to ask you some questions that you may have heard just recently. And I would like you to each, uh, I'm not going to ask each of you in turn, we're going to ask you all together, if that makes sense, I'm going to name each of you. So, Tom, 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 Carol. Grace bestowed on you in baptism is sufficient for your call because it is God's grace. By God's grace, we are saved and enabled to grow in the faith and to commit our lives in the ways that serve Christ. God has called you to particular service. Show your purpose by answering these questions. Who is your Lord and Savior? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? Do you welcome the responsibility of the service because you are determined to follow the Lord Jesus, to love neighbors, and to work for the reconciling of the world? Will you serve the people with energy? Intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. See, not too many left here, but Camp and, and Nathaniel are going to have to answer for the congregation. And all of you at home, do you, members of Trinity Church, confirm the call of God to Don, Tom? Tom, Carol, Alexis, Olivia, and Tracy, in the service of Jesus Christ. I do. Will you support and encourage them in this ministry? I will. Let's pray together. Faithful God, in baptism you claimed us, and by your Holy Spirit you are working in our lives empowering us to live a life worthy of our calling. We thank you for leading the Pastor Nominating Committee to this time and place. Establish them in your truth and guide them by your Holy Spirit that in your service they may grow faith, hope, and love. To be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit honor and glory, now and forever. Let your spirit rule your church, so that we may be joined in love and service to Jesus Christ, who having gone before us, is coming to lead us, in the promise that is in Amen. Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and keep your whole being, spirit, soul, and body, Free from every fault at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Nominating Committee, you are commissioned to service. Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of our Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him.
friends, uh, we are invited as an act of worship to make our offerings from the first fruits of that with which God has blessed us. Uh, you may uh, contribute to Trinity through our online uh, giving portal on the website or send text to our church office. You can contribute your time and your talents and your energies. But let us bless these offerings. Let us pray. We could remember the giants of the past or serve the little ones of today. We could build grand facilities or restore neighbors. We could stay on mountaintops or go into the valleys of loneliness with our arms full of grace. May our lives and gifts we offer be used in your work of justice and hope, we pray. Amen. Friends, as God's own, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience, forgiving one another as the Lord has forgiven you, and crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Shalom, my friends. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.